Hey guys, welcome to episode 91 of The Green Life. Another great episode coming to you with one of my amazing guests. Today I have the founder of Free Melon Society. Is a channel on YouTube and his name is Eli Martyr. Eli has been only living on fruit for about eight years, I want to say, and his journey is amazing. We, are relate, we relate on many levels, and not only that, the, the food, but also spirituality. We talk about this in the episode. And we also go into the breakdown of its channel. The logo of the channel is brilliant, if you look at it, as well as the name. I don't want to give too much away, but you should listen to the episode and actually never a good chuckle. As well as checking out his YouTube channel, which I've linked in the show notes. And we talk about his journey, his health, his development, and the amazing energy that he has and strength that he has only living on fruit. It is something that is really outside of this world. I cannot even believe it. So, before we get into the episode, a big shout out to Nama Well for the J2 Juicer. You guys know I love my juicer, I love them, they're a great brand, so all the links to the discount code in the show notes, as well as my affiliation with Dr. Morris, where you can get 5% discount in your first order if you order from using my code and from the link below. You also help the channel because it's an affiliation and I actually get paid for it, so I thank you very much for considering that, as well as a great affiliation with Newzest, a wonderful company that makes protein powders without any junk in it. And I have my favorite, which is the Green Vitality uh, Powder, which has basically all the foods. It's basically a food-based supplement. And so I truly love it. I incorporate it in my daily, and I really feel the difference when I have it. So if you wanna check them out, I have a 15% discount code, as well as other brands that I work with, so you can really have your little pick. I've also linked my website to work with me if you feel like it. I have my inner circle starting in April, so if you want to join, please do feel free to do so, as well as my farm here in Northern Portugal, where we host retreats the whole summer. So guys, without further ado, let's get into the episode. Welcome, Eli. Hi, Eli. Thank you so much for being on The Green Life today. How are you? Uh, I'm wonderful. Thank you so much. Yes, how are you? Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Happy to be here. So um, yeah, feeling good. And what about yourself? How are you doing? I'm doing great. Sunny shining. And I'm so happy you accepted. I um, I found you out recently from one of my subscribers. And I really like your channel and your vibe. Uh, you have really high energy. And when I learned you were on fruit for so many years, I just thought this is a brilliant testament that we can be super healthy, vibrant, energetic, and actually also much more spiritual when we are cleansing our bodies. So I thought that would be a great conversation to have. So if people haven't come across you, and I'm pretty new to your journey, can we share a little bit about your path? Yeah. Uh, uh, So I am, I'm just a regular dude. I, I grew up the same way everyone did. Uh, Typical, Italian lifestyle, Italian culture. Okay. So in terms of diet and eating, Mm -hmm. uh, I was really into physical fitness and athletics and movement and gymnastics and martial arts when I was a kid. And those are interests and disciplines that I maintained throughout my entire life up to this very day. I, uh, with that interest in athleticism and physicality, um, got into exercise very early. And when I was done with high school, I graduated, I went to university and studied kinesiology in university, got my degree in kinesiology. And, and after that, I went into film and became a professional stuntman. Wow. So not immediately. I didn't just step out of school and become a stuntman. That, that's not how it works. But anyway, I'm just skipping the process. There was a transition there. <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, so I eventually got into film and uh, found a career in, in film that I've been enjoying uh, ever ever since I was out of school. Wow. And, Amazing. And the, oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And then, um, and then, of course, I started up my channel several years ago. I can't remember exactly how many years ago it was. It's been now, but it's been a couple of years. And I started up this channel because when I was still in school, I, I found that I was becoming a fairly passionate, independent researcher, just in all sorts of subjects and all sorts of topics and all sorts of fields, accumulating lots of books over time. Um, and, 
actually the the library backdrop that you see in a lot of my videos like there's there's hundreds more <laughs> at um at my at my mom's right yeah. so there's just, we just tons of books in our family just tons of books so anyway uh yeah i became an avid reader and just plugging away and then at some point the obligation was incumbent on me that i i needed to not only accumulate more and and broaden my own understanding but the obligation hit me like a ton of bricks and like you don't you don't have the right to just not share anything back that you've taken from all these wonderful people who've done the same who've who've been of service and you know put their their understanding in some form that was available to people so i'm like yeah i have to do the same that's 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 just how that's just how it works so so that's what i did and i started up the channel and i've been i've been loving it ever since amazing and um mm -hmm. when in the in this um tra period did you trans uh, transition to eating from eating a normal standard i guess american italian diet um yeah. to um to actually going on a full fruit and did you actually transition to fir first vegan raw vegan or was it just straight to fruit um no i i went to a very very clean very healthy uh, vegan diet first so exclusively exclusively um whole food plants mm -hmm. uh, okay i say exclusively if if not for the occasional something or other but mm -hmm. when left to my own devices preparing my own food at home then it was always whole foods um whole cooked whole foods and raw yeah. whole foods okay yeah. So I did that for a number of years, did that for about seven, seven, eight years or so. And then um, I, I also was very interested in fasting during that time. So I would, um, I say religiously, but I, what I mean is very, very um, routinely and systematically and consistently. Um, I, I very routinely did a 36 hour or slightly more fast every every weekend without fail with no no compromise no yeah. you know it was out of my hands it's like that's just what happened it um i chose saturday to do that which in retrospect going through school was probably a silly idea that's when all your partying is done and so maybe that was a good thing maybe it helped me last throughout the evening because uh, you know dancing and whatnot just because i didn't have much food and you don't need as much sleep so yeah. maybe it helped to mitigate the damage that i would get <laughs> if we're coming home from a, a nightclub really late but at the same time yeah there was like farmers markets that happened on the weekend there was like social events with my friends so um so it was always fun mitigating that and uh just doing the social thing but not eating um can could sometimes just be uh, not not difficult not i'm not going to use the word difficult because it wasn't it was easy as pie but it's just when you know what when you're very sure-footed about what you're doing and and why it, it, it's it starts to be really irrelevant what the world around you is doing mm. and so anyway um i did that for many many years until uh, eight years ago, I, I made the next little tweak and transition in my developmental path and uh, converted to a mostly fruit diet, right? All raw and um, yeah, most mostly fruit, like 90% of the time uh, fruit. And okay, that's amazing. First thing to mention is um, well done on having no peer pressure because I think a lot of mm. people fail, you know, you say when you know something and you're you know, still into that belief, you can do it no matter what's around you. And I'm, I have that character as well, but I know a lot of people struggle, especially with peer pressure. And you were yeah. at a young age where you were in an environment where it's not really conducive to making these kind of choices. Mm -hmm. And yet mm -hmm. you managed. So that's kudos for that. Oh, thank you. But thank you. also, and I was... You know how was this well how was around you like your your friends must have thought she lost it what's going on here <laughs> well at first at first it wasn't so bad because i was still a relatively culturally adapted person yeah. with you know but i i never on my own i never ate out so 
I, I got very accustomed to preparing everything I ate at, um, on my own. So that was uh, that was one thing. I, I never ate out, ever ate out. From the time I moved out, uh, I never ate out. Um, yeah, but but you know, I would I would I would make some compromises here or there. But certain things I would never do, like meat, dairy, all this kind of stuff, processed foods. These things were these things were gone. Um, coffees. Uh, teas green teas not that never right mm. um smoking alcohol right mm -hmm. alcohol is never something that i picked up in, 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 for uh, my whole life um I, I i know what alcohol tastes like it's not i'm not saying i've never tasted alcohol i've tasted alcohol but it uh you know i've never i've never really been drunk uh, I've never really, uh, you know, it's never been part of my life. And mm. at some point when I made further investigations into what exactly alcohol was doing, then the like <laughs> the once in a blue moon time where I would taste a bit of alcohol, even that went the way of the dodo bird and no more. So, yeah. so, so a lot of the poison, like the overtly poison habits, um, I, I was already, free and clear with uh, before I even started doing this this current um, this current direction of my life um, so so yeah I was on I was in a in a good position to for my body to accept the next phase of the evolution right in in uh, in kind of sublimating the tissues reforming the mind and the mind body connection all that so uh, yeah the um the fasting helped me helped me do that um and um yeah i've been, been doing it ever since and and things have just gotten better and better uh it's 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 kind of like exercise where if you're a newbie at the gym you'll notice d developments very quickly mm. and then subsequent developments take a lot more energy to build up in a crew before you get to the next, the next level, level right mm the exact same thing with with this right it's yeah. the exact same thing with how your body responds to um to a higher quality character of food you'll the milestones and the developmental leaps and bounds those will come a bit more further and further um between right a bit yeah. more protracted time interval between and and uh so yeah so i've had a couple noticed a bunch of those uh, but the rate of them slows down as you get better and better and better yeah totally. and what about your family i mean i'm i'm half italian so i know gosh food is like religion and god knows you give up the olive oil and you know the yeah. cooked food and the pasta your, your yeah. grandmother is gonna have a stroke <laughs> yeah. yeah how was that with your family it, yeah with my family it was um the the next transition to the fruit-based lifestyle it it, it took it wasn't no my, my family was very accepting right they were they were very accepting um save for a whole bunch of concern at first and worry and fear and all of the all of these things there's just this whirlwind of of uh emotional um concerns and then errant opinions and silly like uninformed opinions coming at me all the time uh, from the from the family you know you should do this you you should really do this you should really do this and you know you have to just you have to just smile and nod and like yeah yeah you know you know like I, I've considered all these things you know I, I'm I, in fact I'm making this decision because of my deep consideration of all other alternatives it is mm -hmm. it is for that reason that I am doing exactly what I'm doing so it's not that I haven't, I've failed to make these other considerations that people imagine somehow you, you, you have overlooked, right? At least in my, in my case. So, yeah, so I had to deal with that at first, uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't, I, I will say it's probably not the same amount of difficulty that some people ha have very likely experienced out there. So I was, I got it lucky. Um, the thing, the thing though, is that I was like very very rooted and comfortable and confident and informed in my position mm -hmm. so when i was when i was conducting myself in the way that i was at family occasions and social gatherings and whatnot 
it was it was with a an ease of mind and not trying to draw attention to myself i'm just doing it as if everything is always as it as it has been right yeah and and just owning we, we usually use the term owning right yeah. really just owning it and that's what i did i just really owned it as if like there's this is exactly how this is how it is and it's it's very normal and you know if anyone has issues with this uh, what do you want me to do yeah i hear you so I, I, I'm you. Oh, no sorry. um no no i was just saying it's interesting that they express more concern with the fruit because um my thinking was obviously you basically changed about 16 years ago um mm -hmm. in five 15 years ago um yeah. and there was not much much out there so i can i would have guessed them thinking you going on a plant-based diet being a lot more extreme than having mm -hmm. seen you thrive on it and then just moving on to fruit although i can also consider you know just the fruit could be scary for some people because they think oh my god what about all the nutrients and you're not getting yeah. so and we'll talk about that in just a second um yeah. But um, the other thing what I wanted to ask is obviously you studied kinesiology, which is a beautiful uh, science, health science. And did you, uh, when you transitioned to a plant-based diet, did you actually um, apply the kinesiology, phys phys you know, philosophy of like checking your resonance to the foods you were eating and making sure they would work for you? Or you just easily went into it without really paying attention to that side? That, that's a good question. And uh, right before I right before I answer that one, mm -hmm. I'll just add to the to the previous answer that I gave. Yeah. Um, for, that was family. I told you about how my fam, yes. how it was my family. Uh, I think you would. I'm, I think I might have missed answering this in in just kind of uh, answering other you know other details. Uh, friends, right? Oh, so yeah. how was it with my friends? I think you'd asked about that. Yeah. And uh, friends, it, it was it was very very easy. Okay. You know, very very easy with my friends. Uh, some, some people kind of, you know, change their orientation around you because it, essentially when you do something like this, when you make, when you make such radical structural constitutional changes to your, to your energy, to your philosophy, to, to, yeah, I'll, I'll stick with the term energy mm -hmm. to the energy signature that you're giving out. It, 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 it must, it must you know by natural law change the way others relate to you because yeah. you're going to be they were attracted to you as a friend because of a certain energy signature that resonated with them and then when there's a, a bit of a change there almost like magnets they, they you know things start to reconfigure a little bit right mm -hmm. so yeah so you, you, you everyone's going to experience some of that in their lives um, I had to hear in my first year, I had to hear a lot of ridicule and just people teasing me and, um, you know, a lot of uh, weight jokes because my weight went down okay. uh, quite considerably from what I used to walk around at. So everyone's, you know, where did you go? Are you okay? You know, all, all that, all that stuff. Right? Yeah. And that persisted for a long time until they noticed that I was functioning very 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 well yeah. and then and then no one cares and then and then it was just yeah that's that's eli right yeah were you overweight at all or just um no never uh no no i wasn't overweight no i, okay. was, I was never i was always i was always very athletic and very yeah. um you know um, very muscular basically exactly as i appear now just just thicker and built and mm. bigger like okay. denser yeah <laughs> yeah um okay so okay and the uh okay sorry I, I i went on i went off track there <laughs> okay. yeah with kinesiology um no i schooling is it, education essentially is a, a very largely captured institution that has really been commandeered by market forces and business forces and uh, business powers and other other types of influences that are, are, are really isolating and omitting from education the real elements of a true education that ignite human potential, right? That 
aspect of learning and wisdom is is really it's really been taken out of the university structure right mm. in the college structure so what you'll get what you'll get in in a degree like or in in the course of your time at a university is you'll get very good um education you'll get very good um material logical kind of left-brained information right you go to a biology course they're not gonna no one's lying to you about it. this is where the humerus is you know this is where the radius and the ulna are your kneecap is over here this is the shoulder girdle like that all that is going to be bang on solid information and you'll you'll learn a bunch right um it's it's just there are certain topics there are just certain topics that you you are really not going to get anything from in university and most of the important things in life like the things that actually mattered uh, I had to I had to learn completely completely on my own. It felt like it felt like I took very, very, very little from my university and I took everything from the the education that I was conducting on my own time, right? So um so yeah, no, I didn't uh, I, I always knew I wanted to get into film. Mm. And so it was, my 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 time getting my uh, kinesiology degree i always kind of in, in the back of my mind knew that it was more of a backup plan i just okay. wanted some I, I just wanted a degree in whatever was relevant to my interests mm -hmm. I wanted the degree so that if film didn't work out then i had something solid that i could that i could use you know in my career but uh but it, it i didn't need to end up relying on my kinesiology degree for a career in film and so that worked out but in terms of yeah do i find myself applying my my um the stuff that i learned in kinesiology and in university a lot if i had to if i had to take a, a ratio like 90 percent is what it was self-taught and then 10 percent, you know what i what i learned and remember from university yeah very cool. Thank you for that. Yeah. Okay, amazing yeah. background story. So let's skip to when you started with the fruit and how that impacted yeah. you. What was the next level? And first of all, how did you think about that transition to begin with? Right, right. So how did I... Okay, so that's a good question. How did I frame that in my mind? Um, how did I think about that transition? The, 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 the transition was premised on the understanding or the discovery that i was i was i was something that nature had had designed me to be and for my entire life i had been acting in antithesis to what that was and because of that departure from what the intended design of of my structure was because of that there were certain consequences that i would continue to experience in my life and so long as that recognition was not uh, connected i would continue to have these annoying consequences reproduced over and over and over in my life as many people as is currently the human condition on yeah. planet earth as can is, you give me as, some examples of these consequences that sure. you were experiencing yeah sure um allergies uh, mm. runny nose um eczemas um uh, and uh, getting colds uh, get you know being privy to the regular the regular spectrum of annoying pop-up illnesses that mm. everybody tends to go through right i was normal i i was a normal human being essentially <laughs> and and when you say you're a normal human being you you by default suggest that you live a pathological lifestyle mm. now right? yes that's just that's just the way it goes yeah so okay so the 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 change now from going plant based to more a more of a fruitarian or you know um, high fruit diet ninety nine percent of the stuff I'm eating is fruit it, it, that was premised on just that, that understanding that okay we're 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 frugivorous uh, frugivorous beings we have monotrophic systems 
meaning that we're, we're optimally designed to be eating very simple meals of really just one item at a time. That's what your digestion, digestive system is, is optimized to, to, to do, right? To digest. It's, it's optimized for that. Or at least you get the best, the best of all worlds, best of absorption and utilization and elimination, all of it, when you eat very simply, all right? So it was premised on that. I, I basically, know yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Be self-aware. Know yourself. The, 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 the oldest and most important subject spanning all of antiquity, right? And, and will be for the future of the species. Know yourself. It's the most important thing you could possibly learn uh, uh, compared to any subject out there bar none. I don't care what other subjects we're talking about. Know yourself. That's the, that's the most important thing you could do in life. So, uh, so that's, that's, that's what it was. And what, because I, you know, I tend to be very, very disciplined. If I'm convinced of something, then I will do it. No questions asked. And because of that, then when it came time for me to make the transition or the change there I, it, from the time, the day I woke up as a fruit eater, it was, I just didn't mentally give myself other options because those other options didn't exist. I'm, I'm uh, the, the perspective I'm using is look, if, um, if, if I can't, if I can't naturally enjoy this food, uh, on its own and enjoy the same relationship to eating that characterizes all life on the planet. If I can't do that, then I'm not considering it food. And so these are my options. And so I just gave my, I opened myself up to a world of options within certain parameters. And then I just went nuts within those parameters, enjoying, experimenting, having fun, trying new things, trying this, trying that. And just enjoy. I just enjoyed it. Right. I just enjoyed the heck out of out of those first several years, <laughs> out of all the years. But I'm saying it was it was great. Um, and I didn't have. Now nah, you probably have other questions, so I, I might not want to just go on with this. But the the first the first several months noticed lots of changes, and the and for me it wasn't a difficult transition at all i found the ease and the simplicity and the beauty and the, the 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 cleanliness and the elegance of the diet were just so palpable so so tangible so profound that just those elements of of the transition alone were enough to make me very convinced that that that's it I, I, there's no looking back now. There's, it's like, it's like one of those, uh, I don't know what you call them, those holographic images that you, uh, that you, that if you just look at them, they, they're just a, a, a pattern of chaos, but you have to focus in a certain way. And then the holographic image kind of just pops up, a 3D yeah. holographic image pops up. It's like, once you see it once, it's very difficult to not see not it see ever it. again, yeah. right? Yeah. You can't go back. And so once I'd uncovered, oh, this is how your body responds when it's when it's being cleaned out, when what's coming in is actually um, God-ordained. I'll say God-ordained, mm -hmm. nature-ordained. Use whatever term you want. I don't care. It's the same mm -hmm. thing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I was aligning myself with that. My body was responding and, you know, my weight was coming off my, my body and it was, it was all wonderful. I knew why. And I just, I just surrendered. So it was, it was very much a, uh, all right, just take me nature. I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to do what, what I'm supposed to do. And whatever happens to all this, I don't, I don't care. Don't mm. care what anyone else has to say about it. I don't give a, sh I don't give a, I don't give a crap yeah. what people will say. I'm, I'm surrendering. I'm surrendering myself to you. I'm putting my body on the altar and, and giving that sacrifice and just letting the process unfold and whatever happened, happened. And I didn't, I didn't, 
I didn't make any bones about it. I just moved through it. And that yeah. allowed me to stay consistent over all the years and start reaping the benefits of the uh, consistent approach and un unwavering approach to the best dietary choices that you could that you could make. Right? That is amazing. I um, I'm going to touch on something you said right here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, putting yourself out there as on the, on the altar as a sacrifice. And uh, I think actually that's really the meaning of it. Like in, in order to ascend is connecting to natural law. That's the sacrifice to yeah. let go of the things that we have institutionally been taught and conditioned to accept as truth and normal. Um, and so going back to natural law definitely does that. And so the sacrifice is mostly because we have to change our habits, but I, once mm -hmm. you've done it, it's just such a beautiful natural transition. And I am right. not even, I'm, I'm not on a full fruit diet. I'm mostly raw, but 95%, 90%. Um, I, I love fruit, but I actually noticed that when I was having just fruit, my I maybe because I obviously am a woman in my 40s and uh, you know hormones I was putting a little bit of belly fat on so mm -hmm. I balance it with with um with lots of greens and that works better for me um but I tried it and um I still have my breakfast of fully fruit and I love the, the abundance and you know just how I, I'm not counting calories I'm never dieting I'm never worrying it's just food that is beautiful for me and like you a lot of people are commenting about how much weight I've lost and but I am like, I actually for once in my life feel like I'm at the right place. I don't have visceral fat, which I had. I don't have, I gave myself type 2 diabetes on a vegan diet, by the way, because ah. I started, oh. yeah, I started mm. with um, with a whole food plant-based diet because I always had like really good home-cooked food that I was making when I was omnivore. But mm -hmm. I, I slowly started having more treats and more like alternatives. And at some point we moved to Portugal. I transitioned to this lifestyle here, a new country, no language skills, uh, a project that really mm -hmm. drove me crazy because we opened um, a retreat on a farm that was in ruins and I had to deal with the builders and I was doing everything. And it would really, it was very heavy emotionally. So uh -huh. I just could not even phantom thinking about my health. I was just like, I need to, I'm hungry. I'm just going to have pasta and yeah. the fake cheeses and whatever. And then I got sick. On top of that, the stress led me to um, adrenal exhaustion. And it right. took about three years for me to really get myself to a place where I'm like, I cannot do this anymore. Like, I am literally going to die. And mm -hmm. um, and transitioning was easy. Like, once I make up my mind about something, I do it. And uh, within a year, I, I just was mostly on raw. And I nestled all these transformations happening without even thinking about it. And of course, people think I'm crazy. And I live in a country where there's uh, like heavy meat eating. The, the, that raw is not even really a thing here. It's such a niche. Like you have to, if you meet raw people, like you're like, wow, one in a million. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's not. Veganism is starting. There's a lot of microbiotic, but it's really not not a trend. Like th there's no raw food restaurant, not even in Lisbon. So mm. it's a little bit backwards that way, but it's okay. You know, you... It's better in a way to just be fringe uh, so that you cannot make mistakes. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you're like learning on your own. And um, yeah, and it's just the magic. So I can totally relate to that, what you were saying. And um, and it's it's true. It's aligning to natural law. And that's the sacrifice in bracket. It wasn't, but, and now I'm just like, that's so like the really the way to be. And I know that we can, you know, science can always prove us wrong and they can have, you know, different opinions and this and there's a balance there that you want us to look at but i really feel that there's so much truth into this and i got into mm. learning about fruit from dr robert morris i don't know how you came across this information um so i got into it oh there's a couple books um Ar arnold Errett's book was was really helpful uh, I, a lot all the natural hygiene books so i, mm. I started perusing all the natural hygiene literature um, Russell Troll, Sylvester Graham, um, Dr. Tilden, uh, Herbert Shelton. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. All, all, all that, all, all those guys and, um, guys and gals, there was, um, there was, there were more men than, than women at the yeah. time. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, there was, uh, there was a, there was a good mix. There was a good mix of educators. And so, yeah, I just, I perused all that literature. Emmett Densmore, who, 
uh, who in his 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 work is wonderful it's it's very it's very eye opening but he he wasn't he 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 understood why it would be a, a good thing to have a diet mostly of fruits and nuts that's what he was you know he kind of advocated but he in practice he uh, he he Sharing. was a, yeah he he was um a meat eater right mm -hmm. he, he so and he um and he he advocated um certain like um uh, certain meat diet cures uh, kind of just like today it was interesting but then in in the same you know in, uh, reading one of his books in the same book that he would also he would also give reasons why uh, meat was not a good idea I mean, yeah it's just like, it was like this weird thing i'm like I, I don't i don't know where you stand it's 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 very yeah. it was funny anyway um yeah so a lot but a lot of a lot of these um a lot of these educators from the from the 19th century and 20th uh, er, early 20th late late uh, 19th so that's how i got that's how i got started right getting that's into cool. the the natural hygiene literature yeah yeah yeah. I th yeah it's a great place to start um mm. i i yeah i studied with dr morris about the fruit and then i went back to looking at nat naturopathy as a whole mm. and uh yeah i came across many of the uh names that you mentioned yeah. um I definitely, when it comes to cleanses, they are they were definitely very forward about it, especially with the with the fasting, which yeah. is something that scares a lot of people. Again, this have this thought that we shouldn't eat. I mean, I study intermittent fasting. That's not even like a very extreme fast, but I feel so much better. I think mm -hmm. there is just uh, the body is not meant to be stuffing ourselves all the time. Um, and you know, when we don't do that, we have so much more space to actually go deeper into different kind of nutrition as well, like especially the spiritual. Um, side and this is what I would love to transi transition uh, with you right now because I've noticed from your channel that there is obviously much more to this than food and uh, your spiritual journey is very elevated and you teach some things that are very um, deep probably not often understood by people uh, let's start first though with the name of your channel because I think that's well as we were talking before um, we started recording but you know the the free melon society which I, I found is brilliant and one of my questions was did you gain did you get this idea and you gain the knowledge you have because a lot of the things that are spiritual deep knowledge that is not necessarily shared in mainstream uh, is also shared in some um, in some institutions, and you made a very good point at clarifying uh, that. You know, cause I thought you were actually in the Freemasons as well. And you made a very mm -hmm. good point at clarifying. So I'd like you to clarify that here. I think it's a great starting point for people to understand where you come from with the knowledge and what these institutions that are professing certain things do. Sure. Yeah. That's yeah. That's a great question. And so, it, okay. When I was in the process of trying to come up with some sort of uh, identifying badge for my for my channel, right, some sort of icon that represents it very well, um, you know, so you're racking your brain over over the days and weeks go by, and it's just like, uh, I know I know the kind of theme that I'm going to be dealing with. I know that I want to harmonize esoteric philosophy. Okay, the the work of the 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 Magi of antiquity, right? I want to blend that with with conventional health understanding and show the link and the marriage between the two, right? And and and, and teach like the higher principles that that should govern health. And so I knew that this was the this was the link, and I knew that spirituality was involved. So of course, there's that whole side of of you know, out, out of body, out of body travel, um, spiritual, deep spiritual introspection, uh, energy systems, all of this kind of thing. Quantum theory, right? Quantum mechanics is, is mm -hmm. something that's kind of making that link, right? The closest thing I should say that is yeah. making that link right now. Wait, but all of that, the spiritual sciences, right? The spiritual sciences. So I knew I wanted to harmonize these two. And, um, and I knew that I wanted to be doing lessons and lectures and whatnot. I also knew that there was nobody on YouTube, like, no, 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 no. I shouldn't say nobody because I, I know that there's, there's a lot of really, really good channels out there that 
talk about this. But I I have not seen any channels kind of link the the food question and the the health and nutrition question with esoteric philosophy occult science as as I have. I I see very few channels that have done that, right? So I'm thinking like how oh, what how do what do I what do I choose to represent my my channel? And then of course, like the most obvious thing, right, that I've been studying for years and years and years, like secret societies and uh, occult societies, occult traditions, mystery mystery school uh, teachings, all all of that. So it's, it's and then it was like, oh my God, free you know Freemasonry, right? I know I I gone into symbol literacy all right or looked or researched um you know symbology mm -hmm. and and gotten into what certain symbols mean where they come from and whatnot gone through a lot of manly p hall's stuff which is really really enlightening stuff really really enlightening uh, literature and so yeah so i'd gotten a, a much better idea of what that symbol means and of course what freemasonry as an esoteric tradition is is doing not freemasonry as we know it today as as is um talked about in certain like conspiratorial uh, um documentaries and whatnot all the, all that stuff is 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 correct about the inst Institution, the, the lodge system of Freemasonry as it exists right now, which is an institution that has has been that is getting how do I say this? Okay. They their teachings are based upon and premised upon a very, very old tradition of the study of natural law and spiritual science. Okay. And of and of making humanity better by a by an instilling in the mind of the principles of 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 god of nature of the grand architect okay and aligning the the behavior the moral behavior and the physical behaviors aligning that as closely as possible to those to those uh, ordinances mm -hmm. and and unleashing the potential of of god's glory within all right mm -hmm. This is the work of the ancient, the the one true religion in in the past, deep in antiquity, the mystery religion, the mystery science of nature. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll call it the mystery sciences of nature. It is the one, one true religion upon which all the world's institutional religions are premised on, mm -hmm. and have taken elements of. And have wrapped over it layers and layers and upon layers of inane, uh, silly nonsense. And and um, I shouldn't even say nonsense, but heavy allegory, okay? Um, uh, allegory, but also, yeah, some silliness, okay? Um, and so it's the same thing with Freemasonry. It it, it has taken from that 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 repository of deep, deep, deep spiritual wisdom. And over the years had been instructing the Magi and the adepts, um, you know, of, of, uh, of the, of the, of antiquity. And mm -hmm. so at a certain point now, all right, in, in the late 18th century, what happened is that subversive forces that had been, um, slowly slowly accumulating their their wealth and power since the fourth century um <laughs> in the in the church structures and in the institutional church structures um the 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 uh, catholic institution roman catholic institution um so those powers had started to had started to develop and grow and it it, it, there was a brand of, I guess, a pernicious type of evil that started to really capture these elite societies and the elite families and bloodlines that um, that sought to kind of dominate dominate the world, really, yeah. uh, since since the, since around the fourth century.
what from the time that we we catapulted ourselves into the dark ages right? yeah so um so by the 18th century now late 18th century the original type of uh freemasonry that was intended that that had gotten infiltrated by all sorts of corrupt influences by these these power hungry elites that had been at the helm of steering the world in certain directions um for for hundreds of years at that point already and so they wanted because of the secret society structure that was already um, inherent in freemasonry what they wanted what they liked was they they liked that structure the secret society the secret network that yeah. was working in the underground um sometimes literally the underground but just away from everybody and and working to improve humanity right yeah so they like that idea they like that structure that was already that was already set up and so there was an inf a slow infiltration of subversive agents all throughout the network of freemasonry and um and so what you got was essentially the power and the network and the influence of of freemasonry except with this poison pill of you know of dark luciferianism and say you know satanic influences and and you and now you've got the conspiratorial aspect of of all the documents documentaries and literature and, yeah. and whatnot that you see today yeah so with that as a context now all right when i'm thinking about my channel and how i want to structure it i'm thinking oh my gosh there's no better there's no better structure or 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 approach or philosophy that would be more suitable for my channel than a a, a secret society okay a secret society that is teaching unconventional but naturally natural and true wisdom all right yeah that is that is that is not conventional that is separated from the, from the direction that the rest of the world is is going on but that ignites human potential in a deep way that aligns itself with the principles of nature right yeah. and so i'm like oh my god that's exactly what a mystery tradition is that's exactly what a secret society is that's exactly what original freemasonry would have been yeah. And so I'm like, yeah. And, and then so then it just I'm like, all right, how do I fruitize? How do I how do I and free melon, free melon society came up. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, if I just take the logo and just make it all fruit, right? I'm like, oh my God, that's perfect. That's exactly what I'm hope what I the spirit of my channel. Yeah. I know it's I know it's just a YouTube channel and anybody can can go onto it and learn and, and learn whatever you want. But the spirit of the channel is a place that you're going to that is that is teaching things that are uh, of deeper and more significant nature than yeah. the conventional direction that current health understanding is 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 currently uh, mired in. <laughs> yeah. So um, and yeah, and with the logo now, I won't get too much into it, but the logo itself is it's it's a the square and the compass. Okay. Mm -hmm. The square and the compass and so the in the ancient world um the square was usually representative of of earth earthliness and material yeah. materiality right um you have um you know the the elements like earth air fire water right and it, so a square like geometrically a square would would represent those those elements and so there's the and there's the correlation there and energies between the shape of a square and mm. there's this whole there's this whole body of of you know of kind of geomancy and and numerology that is just yes. so captivating and the association between uh, numbers and music it, it, like this the stuff will just blow your mind with how deep and significance and and the intelligence of nature responsible for creating uh, you know th this universe of these w wonderful you know coherences it's just it's just, it blow it, it completely baffling yeah anyway getting back to what i was saying so 
yeah, you, the, the square is representative of materiality. And then the compass, right? A compass, the tool that uh, that you would use to trace perfect circles. A yeah. circle is, is representative of spirit, all yeah. right? That which is above materiality because there are no corners there's no there's no nothing dis, is distinct is um um there are there are no sides there's no polarized sides yeah. in the circle, and it never right? ends it never it ends. never ends there's no beginning yeah there's no end right um they're all all relevance has yeah. been um removed yeah. from the concept of a circle yeah. right there's no this or that right so it's that's the spiritual aspect that's the yeah. spiritual element when we become more spiritual, those types of earthly dualistic principles, they 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 kind of evanesce and they, yeah. they, they, they go away. So in in the logo now, in, in this in this union of the material and the spiritual, well, that's exactly what all religions kind of allude to when they talk about, you know um becoming one with god you know mm -hmm. jesus teaches you that you know that i am you know i am i am the son of god and you are the same right you, you yeah. you're you're unifying yourself with the principles of god and that's you know interestingly curiously that's that's what the logo means and i'm and and of course i'm like oh my god that I mean, there is literally, there's literally nothing that I could, no symbol that I could use that would more accurately characterize what this channel is about, right? Yeah. Nothing, there's nothing I could think of. And I'm like, yeah, this is it. And so just grabbed a whole bunch of fruit and then, and then gave the, made the logo. And I'm like, and then once I saw it put together, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, this is perfect. Yeah, this is exactly, yeah. So, man. That's, that uh, is amazing. Mm -hmm. I honestly, I love it. And um, as you said, like we were talking before as well, before uh, the show, I, you know, this is when I saw it again. It really resonated. Um, that's the message and how it came together, the natural law approach, the mm -hmm. spiritual side of it. So I knew exactly what to expect, but I'm really, it's fascinating to hear the background. And, you know, this is just a testament that you well read and also that you keep on researching. And, you know, it's, those kind of researches are really deep rabbit holes because yeah. one thing doesn't have the full picture to then connect the dots. You have to go to something else and connect and connect and connect. And it's a never ending learning curve. And I think that as spirits living this uh, human experience, that's our job, you know, to find these very deep truth to the extent that we can. We'd probably know much more when we go back home and we back into spirit and we are, you know, aligned with, our maker, our creator, our architect, and learn all the things that we maybe did not even get privy to here. Um, but on on this journey here, like the ascension really comes down to wanting to gain more knowledge and aligning ourselves to na nature. I learned um, last year, two years ago, maybe. Yeah, two years ago, I learned about, for example, the, the, the watchers that are in nature. Like, for example, even fruit uh, being... Uh, it's a is a watcher Shaftiel, and yeah. uh, if you go back to the book of of Essenes, like they knew about this truth, and this is like ancient, right. and they were talking about the fact that we are meant to eat these fruits that are given as gifts because they contain everything that we possibly need, and uh, there is no ending of a cycle of life when you eat this kind of food, which is. You know, again, I always have to, as a nutritionist, I always have to balance what I, when I, when I talk to people, I have to balance the science because a lot of people are still not in the spiritual side. But mm -hmm. when I talk to people that are much more elevated, I always talk about that spiritual ascension and saying, you don't want to end a life cycle when you eat something. So putting death in our body makes no sense because we are life. We are created from life. We are life. And if there is an, inf an infinite, um, you know, like, movement in our body from energy to, to like all the way up to ether, then you can't just stop that that cycle by putting something that doesn't have any more regeneration or or a new cycle right this is why eating animals or even the interpretation the false interpretation of sacrifice in some religious books can be challenging for people because that's not exactly what it meant uh, and again, everything has been, of course, tampered with. But, you know, again, like the beautiful diving into truth is such a, it, I can understand why people are afraid of it and they freak out and they don't want to really learn. It's uh, 
it it shakes you out. It takes you out of dissonance. It can be it can have a lot of truth trauma. And as humans, we always want to rationalize everything for the simplest, and nothing is simple in the universe. So it's a very intricate one. But uh, and you touched, of course, on numbers. You know, given it just the Fibonacci sequence, like how much yeah. it's telling us about our relationship with nature and the universe. So very, very interesting knowledge that you share. And uh, again, your channel is a very much a reflection. And I know you said there are many channels where you can learn things, but you know, as you said at the beginning, people are attracted to your energy and your energy definitely transpires through what you create. So, um, you know, it comes from a place of goodness. It comes from a place where you really care that your journey is inspiring to others, that there is uh, maybe a path that people can follow. And I was wondering if, if aside from your, uh, of course you are, you have a, your work in cinema, but aside mm -hmm. from your, from that and from your channel on YouTube, do you actually have groups where you help people with coaching? Do you, have you taken that step as well? So I do, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consultations. Yes. Okay. So that's something that I've, that I've, um, more, more recently opened myself up to. And so, yeah. And, and, and people call in all the time. I, I, I very, I have many clients throughout the week and, or throughout any given week. So, but I, I don't have, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. That's that's really all I all I offer. I I don't as of right now I don't have anything else that I'm that I'm offering with my channel other than the lessons themselves and mm -hmm. if people want to reach out then 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 they can and make myself available to them. So um yeah, it's it's pretty much just those just those two, right? So so what mm -hmm. I put up on the channel I I have an Instagram as well. I I I'm I'm not super tech savvy. I, I, I don't, I, I try not to spend a lot of time on, you know, on, on social media and whatnot. And, uh, so I, but I do have an Instagram and, and I will upload like, you know, little, little things, little excerpts from my lifestyle. Uh, you know, cause people like to see that. It's nice. It's mm -hmm. nice to just uh, see what you're doing outside of just the videos that you yeah. on YouTube. Right. I get it. It's it's a good thing to do. It's it's a, it's a smart move to have if you're um if you're a YouTuber. So so I have an Instagram and and my YouTube channel and that's pretty much it. Oh, the the channel is mirrored on BitChute and Odyssey as well. So my my channels get regularly updated on those platforms as well. Uh, but and then of course um yeah working with clients so yeah. um yeah people can just email me and then uh and then we get the ball rolling so that that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it yeah the videos um and and consultations brilliant mm -hmm. now let's talk a little bit about what you eat in the day because a lot of people again are very interested in about okay uh, so you're a fruitarian you're eating a lot of fruit and mm -hmm. now what what's your day like how do you start your day and do you still fast what do you drink <laughs> right uh, uh, yes, yeah, the answer is yes. Yeah, I, I definitely still do fast. It's it's more, it's it's less of an uh, uh, of an effort effortful thing nowadays. It's more just something that kind of just elegantly happens, you know, without without too too much too too much input on my end. Um, yeah. Uh, how do I eat? I always get, yeah, I always get a little, I always get, get a little like, ah, oh, okay. How do I answer this question? This question? Well, um, but whatever, I'll, I'll just, I'll just say, I, I always, I, I always feel reserved because I, I feel that some people might hear what I, what I eat and then think that get the idea to be inspired to do that. Right. And so let's put a caveat. You are on this journey for a very long time. Yeah. Your body got used to certain things for a very long time. So you transition yeah. throughout time. So the place where you're at now is not necessarily what another person would be, which is why if right. people work with you, you can consult with them and help them transition or adapt the, the way that they eat to their needs. So right. for the listeners, we'll make it clear that what you eat is not necessarily what I eat in a day is what you should eat in a day is what you eat for the place you at right now. Okay. Yeah. 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 Correct. Yeah. So what I tend to eat very simply, 
And usually what I eat is just a mono uh, fruit of some sort at that particular uh, time, right? So let's just say I've got a, let's just say I've got a window of two or three hours, all right? and uh, and i have a meal of some fruit and then uh, maybe it's a papaya and then maybe uh afterwards it's a bunch of apples okay mm. maybe an, uh, some apples and a and a banana um and and that's you know that that could be it maybe maybe something else later on later on in the day uh, it, it, the 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 general the general tenor of my meals is a a mono meal of some sort okay or two right two different mono meals of some sort and i will eat them either afternoon and maybe sometime in the early early evening or maybe it'll just be one very uh you know small ish window like a two hour window, three hour window in the day. And, and then I'll just have one, one meal, one meal being a type of fruit, wait like 10 minutes or so, and then have another type of fruit, right? Just give it a, just space it out a, a little. That is most of the time how I eat most of the time. Uh, there are, there are days where in terms of calorie Cal calorie intake or caloric intake i've i've seen i've seen as low as 300 400 calories in a day um i've seen that very often uh i other times i'll see more of a a 1000 calories uh 1400 800 900 like i'll see anywhere in that ballpark anywhere in that ballpark uh which and and I, I I guess that's where I I always get a little like unsure of 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 myself yeah. in in saying and sharing because it you know I, I know how people are I know I know how people are they can they can hear that and then just you just get the wrong idea right you had mentioned that you know you were telling me about what you what you what you ate mm -hmm. and that's that's exactly the 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 how I, in my head, oriented myself when I started doing this. Mm. I uh, and any evolutions in how I ate or the the further restrictions that I made in my diet, those they weren't like they weren't intellectually based. I kind of I, I tried to surrender my intellectuality mm -hmm. to you know just surrender my intellectuality and allow the the impulses coming from the higher intelligence of the yeah. body let those speak and i i wanted to be receptive to them and yeah. have an ear a, a trained ear to listen to that so yeah so i had i had kind of surrendered my intellectuality right and i would just surrender to the impulse that was coming from within and i i decided that it would be safer of me. I would be likely to make less dietary mistakes if I just followed that and let that be my guide mm. rather than use my fallible mind and eat in accordance with either intellectual ideas or, or superstitions or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so when you were describing what you, what you were eating, you said, you know, like, um, uh, you gave wh whatever whatever characterized your your diet right as of right now and it's good because you you've got your parameters and your parameters exclude the things that are not suitable right mm -hmm. or much less suitable for the for the human uh, constitution and as long as you're in those parameters this is kind of what i always like to say to people as long as you're in those parameters then what you should do is just allow yourself to be taken wherever your body wants yeah. as long as you're marshalling yourself against the evil the dietary evils of the world <laughs> yeah so intellectually restrain yourself from those because you know better right this is what it, this is what is called being a mature being yeah. an adult all right being a response be not being a petulant childish individual <laughs> this is what it is 
things. This is higher responsibility to the self, right? Yeah. Re recognition of the gift that your body is and acting accordingly, right? Yeah. That's what this is. So you use your in, your, your your understanding to yeah to abstain from those. But once you've done that work already, within those parameters, yeah, it's good to just listen to your body and just without question, without guilt, without shame, without questioning, just allow yourself to, to do where your body's taking you because, yeah, at that time, that's probably what you need. Yeah. Right? People, people will sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll answer someone's question regarding what do I eat I'll tell them because I'm not going to lie to you mm -hmm. I, I will tell you what I eat and then what they'll do is they will marshal themselves against their body calling them to have a little bit of, of whatever uh celery or lettuce or something and yeah. like, no no I, I don't want to do that because I want to stay all fruit and it's like Okay, but your body is telling you that this is what it's it's wanting or needing right now. Yeah. And you're with your mind, you know that these still fall within the parameters of of what is proper to eat. So you should do that. Mm -hmm. And then when your body stops calling for those things, if that's in the cards somewhere, mm -hmm. then at that time, that's when you should stop going for those things and go for something else that you'd rather have instead that you're actually being called so you organically make these tweaks and shifts in yeah. in how you conduct yourself in your diet so long as your parameters are correct yeah right? i agree for excluding the rest of the the the, the, the awful things so um yeah that's that's the orientation that i'm that is going on in my head yeah. over these years as you know as i'm navigating this this diet and so any any kind of tweaks in the direction of less food less food um you know going a, a day or two here and there just just you know kind of effortlessly right that that's it's not happening because I'm being rigidly intellectual and saying like, oh, well, my macros, you know, were such and such this day. They were such and such this day. And in order to get into ketosis, right, and burn this much fat, I should fast for two. Yeah. No, no, get the hell out of here. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no organism on planet Earth thinks like that. Nobody does that. That's not the intention that nobody, <laughs> you were not intended to conduct your lifestyle with this kind of rigid uh, rigid mindset yeah. that's so rigid it's handicapping yes right? yeah you're so right and you know looking at you you're not emaciated you're actually quite muscular and you look healthy you don't look malnourished so i i definitely believe you're listening to your body and doing what's best yeah. for it um i'm curious to know though do you ever check your blood work and make sure that everything is fine or do you just trust that you are okay um, I, I, I did check my blood work fairly, actually fairly recently mm -hmm. and yeah, everything, everything came back quite normal, right? Okay. Um, the, the, the doctor came back and he's like, yeah, yeah, everything looks, everything looks great, great here. We'll send you, we'll send you your stuff. Um, uh, but you know, I was, I was, I was happy, uh, but I, I don't usually have any, I don't really have any real pressing, uh, need or feel to, check something out where what the what the feeling is is something that is so so distinct from the regular daily feel that i used mm. to walk around at there's there's definitely a um a, a, an experience of something far cleaner and and, mm. and more wonderful and it's just it's just not on your mind really is it yeah. it, it's not if I had if I had a concern, then I would absolutely go and you know check things out more regularly. Yeah. But but absent those, um, it, it's it's just it's hard for that to be pressing on the mind when it's very clear through what you're experiencing that health is starting to characterize your your life. Right. Yeah. Um, and and supplementing is there something that you even care about? 
like B12, for example, or D, because obviously living in Toronto, you don't see much sun much sunshine. Mm -hmm. Do these things are part are these things part of your lifestyle? They they aren't, no. Okay. I I've never I've never really supplemented in in, in my whole life. Um so no, yeah, I've 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 never supplemented with those things. There there are issues with supplements mm. and that are that are difficult to not to not consider. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of what is required, what is required of the vital essence that makes up a food in the processing of a supplement, right? When, when something is turned into a supplement and nutrients are extracted and processed in such a way that they are put into a powder form, a pill form, or any other supplemental form that we're familiar with, such that they have no shelf life uh, not no no shelf life an infinite shelf life right yeah. um when 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 you consider what is required in order to do that you, you have to you have to understand that supplements can can really only nutritionally satisfy you to a very 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 limited capacity and and they're also they can also be a bit dangerous if you're not careful because the quantities that supplements come in are so unbelievably concentrated in sparse sparse elements that mother nature in her wisdom under no circumstance packs into any food in such outrageous quantities right and densities and constant concentrations so when we take the average supplement, right? Like let's just say it's a vitamin D supplement. Your vitamin D supplements are are coming in concentrations that are in wild excess of what your what you would increase. get organically, right? And so when you give your body these this flooding of supplementation, right? You you end up creating by default, by necessity it imbalances that your body has to scramble to rectify and to balance by doing a whole bunch of other biochemistry that by the grace of God is kept outside of your conscious awareness. Because if it were a part of your conscious awareness, you would go, you would go nuts with the things that, that your body has to do. Right. And, and all the workers and energies that are set into motion to try to deal with your dietary offenses right and yeah. and our and our indulgences and and our ridiculous appetites and our attachments right yeah yeah if if we were consciously aware of what your body has to do to correct those mistakes on the insides you you your your mind would be a living nightmare of stress right yeah. so luckily god nature has graced us with the um with the luxury of being unconscious of all those operations all that right now is still in the hands of of uh, your body intelligence and that's where it that's where it should stay should be yeah yeah that's where it should be and i'm i'm and i think what has distinguished my approach from many others is that i'm just one of the few that is willing to put most of my decision making into the hands of a force that knows thousands and thousands and thousands of times more than than I do. Right? Yeah. I'm yeah. willing to to do that and comfortable doing it where most people are have been taught not that putting their faith in something that has unbelievable universal cosmic intelligence is not a good idea. Yeah. Go figure, right? We've been taught. <laughs> we've been taught that this this source of deep, profound wisdom is yeah. not to be trusted. Yeah, yeah. That's mostly because Somehow. even science, you know, when they teach people that even our existence is completely random. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you talking I, about? <laughs> these Johnson, children. These these are these are educated, petulant children. Like, yeah. are you kidding me? How could you, how could you have such a silly and willfully ignorant and obstinately ignorant idea 
right? Look at the world around you. Yeah. Look at a seed turning it. To, wh where where did the information come from? <laughs> create a, a massive oak tree out of a tiny seed. Yeah. But how did that happen? You can't imagine the in intelligences required to formulate the set of natural laws that unfold in the seed when certain conditions are present that allow it to have this cascade of vital force that bloom and grow into this yeah this obelisk like structure right that is time like uh, i know and not to talk about hurts. the new findings like in wilding they're talking about how the roots of every tree uh, communicates and no matter how far they are like one can be in europe or in the americas yeah. and one can be in china and they communicate through the mycelium like how do you not think that this is like structured architected intelligence right of course of course it's it's just it's beyond silly to to be, be highly educated people i'm going to put educated in quotes highly yeah, educated people they are yeah, actually believe that this was this was all designed by r random collision of material lifeless <laughs> elements against each other haphazardly <laughs> in some soup. This 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 is what creates these marvel marvelous yeah. you know splendid fantastic arrangements of life. You guys are you guys are just funny. You're idiots. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't use that word, but it's just like these, these educated people who, who subscribe to this. You are you are you're, you're fools. You know Other what? Fools. You're right. I um I must say the best scientists I came across are the ones that admit that even though they may have started their journey not believing in anything, they mm -hmm. always they'll end up believing in God because all and this is from just looking at a cell. Someone mm -hmm. said to me, I have been in a lab for years looking at cells. And when I look at the structure of a single cell that is part of a, of a, an infinite amount of like trillions of cells in one single body, and I see the interactions and the intelligence and the performance and the biochemistry and the pathways, everything that one single cell can do, I cannot sit there and think there is no God. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hallelujah. <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, yeah. and then you have the ones that are like, no, totally random. We come from monkeys. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's I know. <laughs> at, at, at some point, you just have to roll your eyes, and it, it's it, it is it's it, it is a little it is a little embarrassing. Um, I I find um just just to be so to just to be so shut off from what common sense like common yeah. sense. Co co the commonest of common sense should scream at you right? yeah it, it's yeah it, you know our body is is more complex the human body organisms the organisms. human organisms the structure of biological design is so so rigorously complex we know it's it's vastly vastly more complex than any iPhone, any piece of electronics out there. We know that already. That this is, and that's the this is what's even more upsetting is that is accepted by the same group of intellectuals of of scholastics. Okay, and they'll ex they'll accept that your body is infinitely more complex. You, your eyeball is more infinitely complex. Just one organ is more complex than the workings of the most intricate piece of electronics. Yeah, we understand that. And we also understand that an intelligence, an, a higher intelligence, had to create your iPhone or your or your Samsung Galaxy or whatever it is. I mean, they're using crystals technology. Yeah. Hello, otherwise nothing yeah. works. Right, right. You know, and <laughs> and and we had to we had to assemble this, and we had to we had to have a plan, and implement that plan, and have that plan unfold in physical reality. Right. Yeah. That okay. So, what you think that that same relationship doesn't exist for how you were designed? Do you not see that you are an are also a fantastic, miraculous type of arrangement of physical elements, just like that phone? Well, yeah. if that's the case, if that's the case, then it must be 
that some intelligence was responsible for assembling you. It yeah. can't be otherwise. It, it, it just can't be. It can't be. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's just, it's a funny thing. I know. And uh, it's, but there's, there's always going to be these debates, these, these useless debates, you know, that just they, they don't accomplish anything uh, in, because it's just the, 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 the position that they're, tr that they're trying to defend with, with that is, is so hopelessly naive that it's just, it's difficult to, difficult to deal with, right? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's always going to be the case. So there's always going to be these, 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 uh, kind of, um, rival camps that kind of, um, come at loggerheads with one another, but, but to, to people that have a, a foundation in just some basic, basic natural principles, you, you there's no convincing is, that's required. You just, you can, you can develop and cultivate that understanding in a second and be far better off yeah. than wasting your time getting lost in all of this, type, you know, type of left brain, random evolutionary, you know, mumbo jumbo. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Eli. Yeah. That was brilliant. Uh, well, you already mentioned you have your channels and I will post, I will put everything in the show notes and um, inspire people to work with you and at least learn from you. There is so much goodness out of your channel and I am really excited that I found you. It's really nice to actually, you know, know someone else that um, goes a little bit deeper even then you know, everybody's on their path and it's brilliant. And I think that everybody, and it's great to meet people where they're at. I really believe that. That's why even when I look at research, I appreciate what the research finds out because you know what? Some people need to start there and that's perfect. Um, but, you know, when you want to go a little bit deeper and start and elevating, ascending, I think uh, the tree of life needs um, the right roots and uh, people like you are definitely allowing those roots to be installed in you know, in everybody's soil so that we can mm -hmm. start um, really building our um, our knowledge and going higher and higher. And, you know, and, and this will be, this will resonate with the people that has to resonate with. It will uh, inspire the people that are ready for it. And uh, the beauty of it is that there's definitely people out there and, you know, hopefully your message will find the right ones that they can carry on what is really occult knowledge and should become a lot more... Um, spotlighted to put in other words right yeah absolutely yeah yeah, yeah we definitely you know we, we, it's it, it would behoove all of us to get interested in you know in this body of uh, body of study uh, because you know we're, we're talking about the, the again I, I mentioned it earlier but the most important subjects that you have that you could study right in in, yeah. in the occult world we're talking about those two grand subjects right knowledge of yourself of the self and knowledge of the world around you yeah and between those two things it's it's hard to imagine anything that would be more important or all-encompassing yeah right you, you, everything is contained in those in those two subjects yeah. everything everything and um so if you can you know, it's it's funny as as YouTubers or as people talking about this type of thing. You always there's always a a, a kind of line that you have to toe where because yeah. you're always taking in information, taking in um, new 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 inf information, literature, and new ideas and whatnot. Okay, yeah, you're all that's just that's just a hobby. That's just a thing that you like to do, but it's also constructive because. You want to be sharing these you know, whatever uh, whatever ideas you you take on yourself, but there's always this kind of balancing act that you have to that you have to entertain, where you're taking in or learning information that is um, of second class nature. It's the temporal. It's the it's the nitty gritty. It's the overly particular details, yeah. right? <laughs> The, the the type of information that is not how do I say not transcendent okay yeah, I'll use yeah. that term the yeah. type of information that is limited to just a very particular context right in in 
your current situation at the time in right? our Maybe dense reality in our, this in 3D our reality. reality yeah 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 so i would i would distinguish that type of temporal information yeah right like maybe maybe you know who did what in the in, who started this war yeah. uh, <laughs> for what reason right all that stuff that that's 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 a very interesting um inter interesting interesting field to study yeah. but you have to understand it's it's kind of that it's the the temporal the not as transcended but then there's the other body of of study that is the concepts and understandings are transcendent meaning like they go beyond your lifetime they go beyond uh, they're infinite right mm -hmm. the, the the principles are 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 never ending they're ceaseless they're universally applicable yeah okay so you're always dancing between these two things taking yeah. in knowledge from from the higher from the more from the transcendent knowledge branch yeah. of things and then you also need to supplement it with a certain amount of temporal material knowledge yeah. right and you need to do that in order to uh, to, to live relate. on this planet also to, right <laughs> yeah yeah to live on this planet right to uh, to adapt yourself to being an incarnate entity yeah. on, on in a physical world yeah. to relate to people out there yeah. in the world who are more on the on the conventional scope of things yeah so you need to take in enough of that so that you can temper and and marshal the information that's coming in from the other side of of the spectrum yes because some I've seen some people focus so solely on this side of the transcendent ideas and the overly spiritual that when they try to open themselves up to an audience and convey convey that there's not enough grounding mm -hmm. in in material material information that people can relate to yeah. easily with their minds and so what ends up happening is you lose people and yeah. it's just it, it's hard so it, it's always a, a thing where you have to delicately walk the line between taking in information that is of the more material materialistic and kind of temporal worldly knowledge and then the stuff that is actually of transcendent value yeah. that 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 you that the type of knowledge and wisdom that when you take it in will will be carried on with you and taken in like like nutrition mm -hmm. taken into your soul and carried with you to the next life to the next existence yes yeah that God. is the type of wisdom that i'm that i'm referring to when i yeah. say the transcendent wisdom because the more you learn about the actual deep principles of of natural law and natural science and incorporate them into your life what you are doing is you are feeding your soul in such a way that you are providing growth and nourishment that will apply to other subsequent lives outside of the one that you have right now so true whereas miring yourself not miring but um spending too much time just worrying about the the temporal yeah information right yeah. finances how to manage your savings you know how to get ahead <laughs> there's all the, you know how many ads do you see oh floating? god yeah a million dollars thing it's all about the money get what you want yeah you know what you want has to be materialistic it has to be money-based right yeah money's not bad there's nothing wrong with no, money. no 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 it's energy exchange it's a, it's a manifestation it's energy. of energy yeah yes exactly i'm just saying the attachment to it yes and the 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 erroneous belief that happiness comes when you have gratified your your financial um your financial ambitions yeah how many people do we know that can make be a testament to the fact that that is not the case at, at, at all? How many suicides by 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 highly highly wealthy individuals do we do we see? I like, was in banking. I never oh, met more miserable people, like high net individuals. Oh my god! I mean, they are so go. worried about even losing their money that they just not go. live. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Right. So. So yeah, it, the, it, that's it, there's a difference there that is very mm -hmm. important to recognize, right? 
and you you would probably want to manage and and guard against taking in and swallowing and spending your your mental energy on too much of the stuff that is limited to just your own current life yeah right? there's another body of of information that is applicable to that will echo in your soul character for generation and reincarnations to come in yeah. that is transcended and, and is the spiritual currency L learn that too because that will not only enrich your current life will fuel your current life to to a type of uh, inner uh, how do i say this satisfaction and an and inner fulfillment an inner fulfillment that this body of, of materialistic study is never never going to touch to, yeah. right but it not only will it do that for you but it'll also carry that with you to the next life it's very applicable Absolutely. and actually yeah. i really think that it, because it transcends it can also heal a lot of ancestral trauma yeah and so and there Definitely. is a lot of that to heal on this planet Definitely. so uh mm -hmm. you know the journeys we had before they will be healed as well mm -hmm. um yeah, it's a very thank you. That that was perfectly put. Oh yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, thank you for letting me ramble. <laughs> no, I loved it. Thank you so much. <laughs> that was brilliant. Well, Eli, thanks so much. I will put every all the links for you, and I really uh, we should chat again. I would love to have you on the show again, and uh, you know, just go a little bit deeper in different uh, directions as well. As I know that you will continue to study and grow, and there will be more to share. I'm sure. A hundred percent. Yes. Thank you so much. And and I really appreciate uh, you and having me on your on your platform as well. Um, you've got a you've got seem to have a very interesting story. I'd love to interview you and talk about everything that you've managed to overcome <laughs> with this. Yeah. Sure. So yeah, we'll we'll stay in touch and then yeah. um, we can we can do that in the future. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank Bye. you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Take care, guys. Take care. Thank you, Eli, and thank you everyone for staying on for the show. I hope you found it enlightening and really inspirational as I did. I also hope that you will check out Eli's website and channel on YouTube because it's so inspiring. It's got some really cool videos that can help us grow, not just physically, but also emotionally and spiritually. And as you know, I really love the connection of our food to our development, not just physiologically, but actually how it impacts our growth in a spiritual way. I really believe that we are much more than just bodies. So if you want to try this, give it a go. Open your mind to something different. See how you feel. If it doesn't work for you, you can always go back to what you were doing before. But at least you know you've tried it. This is my motto. Try it. Don't knock it until you try it. So guys, if you liked this episode, please do share it, review it. Make sure you tell your friends about it. The channel wants to grow and we can invite much, much more amazing people to come and join us as we've done so far if we have a great reach and so i really thank you for your support and i'll see you next week bye